after another five-goal outburst Tuesday night against the Oilers, the Blues head south to face the Flames, looking to complete the Alberta sweep. But the pesky Flames won't go down easy. In fact, they burned the Blues the last time here on December 23rd. Can the hottest team in the NHL make it seven in a row tonight? Find out next. Here in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. John Kelly along with Andy Strickland and Darren Pang. Tonight's Dobbs starting goaltender, Jara Halak, his first appearance since getting pulled against Chicago back on December 28th. And Kari Ramo, the Finn, he'll play in goal tonight for the Flames. His last appearance was two games ago. He won in Colorado 4 3, stopping 22 of 25 shots. Well, Oshie did not skate yesterday here in Calgary. Did take the morning skate, and Darren, he's good enough to go tonight, and that's a big boost for the Blues. Yeah, well, it's, the good news is that it wasn't any kind of ligament situation, more of a deep bone bruise situation, and that's very fortunate. It talks, it really speaks volumes about the flexibility of TJ Yoshi. and uh, I'm sure that his ice time, maybe on the penalty kill from Coach Hen Ken Hitchcock, will be lessened a little bit. No need to wear him out in that situation with back-to-back -back games and a tough one tomorrow night in Vancouver. And Blues Hockey is brought to you by Bud Light. It's the sure sign of a good time. Here we go. And for the Blues, it is Schwartz, Oshie, and Backus against Lance Boma, Matt Stajan, and TJ Galliardi. And Leopold back takes a heavy hit there from Boma. And now the Blues take the puck and Cole gets it out. Ball on defense here with Leopold. Now Boma with a couple of big hits right off the hop. Both defensemen on the Blues get drilled early on. Leopold and Ian Cole. That's the kind of game the Flames are going to play here tonight. Now Tara Senko a rocket and that just missed over the crossbar as he got into a very good shooting position. And now Byron turns away from the check. Paul Byron into the zone now for the rookie Monaghan. And then the Blues break it up in front. And Petrangelo to center ice. And he's checked, and Wadislav Schmid gets it. And back up the middle, that is dumped in by Monaghan. And the former Flame Bowmeister to Petrangelo now for Sabotka. And he gets the puck to center ice. Now a smart play by Sabotka, just barely getting the line. Otherwise, it's going to be an icing call. It does get knocked down, but he had the presence of mind to gain the line, even though he had pressure all over. And that's steered around by the Blues. ARV at center ice. On with Lapierre and Reeves. And now the Flames come in and Michael Backlund, whom Bob Hartley said is our best two-way center ice man. Good friends with Patrick Bergman. And they work the puck to the corner. And now it's grabbed by Reeves. Not out. Butler a shot. And the St. Louisans drive didn't get on goal. Lapierre, a partial break back in. To the backhand now. And now Lapierre, a shot, and the save by Ramo. And a good job there by Butler defending on Lapierre. And then Butler will stash it back of the goal for Shane O'Brien. I think that maybe Lapierre was a little out of gas by the time he got that puck at a standstill and then tried to pick up some speed. It looked as if he could drive hard to the net, but he obviously didn't have the energy to get there. And now Westgarth, a shot. And that's into the glove of Yaro Halak, and we get some pushing here near the St. Louis goal. And this is the kind of game that the Blues are going to get from Bob Hartley and the Calgary Flames. They were embarrassed in the last game, the 6-0 loss, as you mentioned, in Phoenix. And uh, they practiced hard there today and ready to go for this one. They are a more physical team than what the Blues faced in the last one. Time now for our Toyota keys to the game, and you've got to play to the Blues level. And... Uh, don't come in here thinking it's going to be one of those easy games. It's not going to be. Lean hard on the Flames once you get to the offensive zone. Play that big, big, heavy, lean on you kind of game and keep that cycle going down low. And the Blues control the faceoff. It's Oshie now with Schwartz. And this goes deep. 
T.J. Brody back on the goal now for Galliardi. And the former Avalanche winger on to center ice for Stajan. And that goes deep. And Ian Cole there, and now we get a whistle. And I assume an icing call here against the Flames, or is it offside? It was an offside call for Ken Hitchcock, and he talked about Bob Harley's club. He, talk, he called them a hard-working, very organized team. You can't get frustrated, certainly, by the way Bob Hartley's club is going to play. And they've already established what they want to do. Their first four checker came in and just drilled Leopold. Second guy came in again, and they drilled Ian Cole on the same shift. And now Westgarth had jumped in there on a little scrum in front of the net. But 26 of their 43 games have been decided by one goal this year. It seems they're in every game. They weren't in their last game, though. Two nights ago in Phoenix, they lost 6-0. Now a break. In the clear, trying to go five hole, and a save by Halak on the speedy Paul Byron. And now a shot from the boards by Hoodler, trying to catch Halak napping, but he was alert to that and made the save. And now Morrow for Jackman. And he is pressured by Hoodler. And now Morrow moves it on to Derek Roy. Shots 4 1 early on for Calgary. Now Roy in front. Too high for Stewart. Now a shot by Stewart. Tipped away, kept in by Shattenker. And he'll play it down the boards now to Bergman. He goes for a skate back to center. And now into Petrangelo. He winds up a shot. And that's blocked by Butler. And it comes around for Tarasenko. In the slot, Sabotka. Turns, fires it. Up high into the glove of the Finnish goaltender, Ramo. And we get a whistle. Well, I mentioned the physical play early on in this hockey game. And our positive tire service replay... There's Bowman. He goes in there and just hammers the veteran Leopold. And then they regroup, and he comes back in, and he hammers Cole. And then Westgarth goes in there and uh, stirs things up. Good save there on the very speedy Paul Byron, who got to the opening, tried to go between the legs of Halak, who's been sharp early on in this game, missing the last five games with that bad flu. And the healthy scratches tonight for the Blues, Carlo Koliakovo and Adam Crackle. Of course, the Blues are still without... Roman Polak, who is on the trip, and Alexander Steen, who is not on the trip. Claims about a couple of key players, including Curtis Glendross and the former Blue, Chris Russell, who's played really well. And the Flames really miss his offensive abilities from the back end. Now Bomey's dropped the ice, and that is slowed up, and the back referee makes a call here and our first minor of the night. It's on the Flames. Interference call on the General Lee Stempniak as he goes off. It's been a bit of a struggle offensively for Lee. Only one goal in his last 14 games. And there's the play right there. The, the, clearly, the, the puck was nowhere near Petrangelo. And, and I guess Lee Stempniak's getting all involved in the physical part of the game. But uh, the referee was two feet to his left when he drilled him. A clear interference minor. Blues were two for three the other night in Edmonton. Now Bacchus, who had his team leading seventh power play goal. Back to Petrangelo, and he can't hold it in. Shattenkirk and Petrangelo back on the points. Schwartz, Bacchus, Oshi the forwards. And the Flames back in. Here's Petrangelo, that's tipped away. And then back in offside. The Flames on the kill this year. 81.4%, that's 16th, but Darren at home... They're just under 90%. That's fourth best. Yeah, that's that's an incredible number. And uh, anytime you go from 16th to fourth, you, I mean, you're doing something right on home ice. And anytime you have that work ethic where your penalty kill, I don't care if it's at home or on the road, when it climbs to those numbers, that's that's an incredible number. Blues are two for seven in two games against Calgary. Here is Leopold. In for Roy, back to Leopold. Two former Flames on defense. Now to Bomeister. That shot bounces on goal. And a good save there by Ramo on a tricky one. And the Flames jab it to center ice. And Bomeister goes back deep in his own zone with a minute to go in the power play. Now on for Roy. And then Bomeister a pass intended for Stewart. That was tipped. And the Flames shoot it high. Schmidt gets it all the way down. And Halak has to play one to Bomeister. And now Leopold again. At two assists the other night in Edmonton. 
Puck comes around in the area. Bergman tipped up high. And that's Leopold again. Now for Sabotka. And then Bergman trying to move it in front. And then Tarasenko helps out. Away from the pack and now to Leopold. Leopold gets it back. And a shot goes wide off the inboards. And then Bergman tried to get the rebound. And the Flames do clear it away. What a smart play by Tarasenko. He knew he was going to get drilled. He had that puck on his stick for a split second before he got it back to Leopold. And now Berglund comes in. Seven to go in the power play. Back to Kevin Shattenkirk. To Tarasenko. Tarasenko in front. Tipped on goal by Sabuka. And a good save by Ramo. What a set play that is there. The high Sedin tip. But it's got to be firm enough so that it has a little velocity to get into the goalie. And this line has done an incredible job of communicating with one another, letting the puck do the work. And that was yet another example. With Tarasenko taking the pass from Shattenkirk on the right side. Shattenkirk walks the line nicely. And then sabotka has got his stick on the ice, nice and firm, gets a good redirection. And if there's any rebound, Berglund's right there. And now the Flames have killed it off. The Blues had two shots. And it remains scoreless. Schwartz for Shattenkirk. Now to Petrangelo. Long wrist shot. That was knocked down in front by Dennis Weidman, the former Blue. And it's on to Camilleri. His pass across the ice for Stemniak. And he's forced to center by Petrangelo. And has to wait for Camilleri to clear the zone. Now Giordano, he lost it. Oshie comes in for the Blues. Down low to Payarvi, trying to center one. That's blocked by Weidman. On the cycle for Lapierre. And then to Payarvi again. He's pushed down. And another penalty called here against the Flames. This one will go against Weidman. A cross check. And now the Blues go right back on the power play in the scoreless first period. Well, the Calgary Flames testing their terrific home PK early on in this game. That's a cross-check from behind on Magnus Payarvi. And then previously, Bo Meester's shot deflects off the glove of Lottie Smead. Great right pad save there by Kari Rahmer, the former Tampa Bay Lightning draft pick. And then before Brendan Morrow can get that rebound, he, uh, it's already out of the way. So there's that nice little tip right there by Sabotka earlier. And now Wyman is gone for cross-checking. As Berglund wheels in, and a shot turned away by Ramo. Now Sabot the back of the goal for Tarasenko. Sends it back to Shattenkirk, and that shot blocked out of play by a sliding Lance Boma. Now, good play by Tarasenko on the half boards. No Shattenkirk being a right hand shot as Boma goes off there with those foot protectors on. But here's the play by Tarasenko. He's got some pressure by Boma there. Boma goes down, blocks that shot. Great play there by Boma, but a nice quick decision by Tarasenko on the half boards. Blues have scored nine power play goals in their last eight games. As Berglund digs in on the faceoff, right in front. Knocked away now Berglund again. Chased by Stebniak, who loses his stick. Now Butler. Turns and fires it high, and a good play by the St. Louis. Yeah, great play because Tarasenko thought he was going to the backhand, but Butler, the savvy veteran, stopped, and then he just fired it right up the middle. Now it's Sabotka with 45 gone in the power play. Can't make a play. And then fired back down the ice by Mark Giordano. And the Blues have to get set up again. Shots are 4-4, no score. And Shattenkirk has plenty of room. Pass in on the wing for Bomeister. Chopped that by Schmied. And that goes off a stick, I believe, and out of play. Well, meet your favorite Blues players with tonight's ticket deal of the game that includes four all-inclusive Bomberito Automotive Club seats, a post-game player meet and greet, and four premium items. The first 10 viewers to order a meet the Blues package during tonight's game will receive a limited edition Brett Hall Crystal Puck. Kyle is standing by to take your order. Call right now at 622 Blue. As the power play continues, Leopold across for Bowmeister. In front to Schwartz. Moves in a shot and a good save there by Ramo. Really good, really good save because from a goaltender's point of view, a left-hand shot that brings it back in to his skates. He changed the angle just a little bit. Quite often, your blocker side will drop lower, but Kerry Ramo did a good job of keeping that up high. And now Stewart collects the puck down low. 20 to go in the power play. 
Stewart gets it free now for Roy. Ooh, good play back to Leopold, and a shot scooped up by Romo, who's been a busy man in the first half of this opening period. And that's two good saves right there. That that one on Schwartz was a real, real good save with his with his right arm, and that one with Brendan Morrow in front of the net, doing what Brendan Morrow does best, goes to the gritty areas of the ice like that, and uh, a nice player. Plaza Tire Service replay. There's the Schwartz one right there, and you can see the way the goaltender gets that elbow up and kind of takes it maybe a little bit higher than I thought. Maybe it was up around that shoulder area with T.J. Oshie right there on the doorstep. Now 12 to go in the power play. And the faceoff won by Backlund, cleared down the ice by Butler. And that's going to do it as far as the power play is concerned. The Blues, three more shots in the power play, but now 0 for 2. Is Roy. Wanders into the flames end. Roy back to Jackman. Now for Petrangelo. In the slot, Stewart a shot, and that goes just wide. And then knocked off the net by Morrow. Here's Roy in front, Stewart shoots, he scores! What a play, and Stewart buries it! And the Blues take a one to nothing lead. Oh, what a pass by Derek Roy. Holy jumping. He just makes a great play back there, and he was telling me after coming back from the flu, just didn't have that strength on pucks, started feeling better in the last game against Edmonton. But Derek Roy, the pivot here, takes advantage of Stewart's shot. But watch the play by Morrow first. Now watch Derek Roy. Right there, spins, turns, right on the tape. Through the legs of the defenseman, Brody. And right on the tape. A great timing there because Stewart's stick is just going on the ice as that puck comes through the legs of Brody. Right on the tape and in the net before the goaltender can even make a move. Well, Stewart had his first goal in seven games the other night. That opened the scoring in Edmonton, and he opens the scoring tonight with his 15th of the year at 9.32. 24 points now for big Chris Stewart. <laughs> He's one of the more vocal guys when you when you think about this team and, and how they are together. It's a very, very tight group. There's a great bit of chemistry and cohesion. He's one of the guys that certainly chats it up before this team gets on the ice. Roy and Morrow get the assist on the goal at 9.32. Now it is Reeves back for Cole. That was too hot to handle. And Jackman back to get it. And off the boards to center ice. Lapierre into Payarvi. Tight angle. Looks to move it in front. Now Payarvi back for Jackman. And his wrist shot. Hit some traffic on the way through, maybe Reeves, and it comes to center ice. Now Reeves again. That's turned to the corner by Rama. And now recovered by the former Oiler, Shane O'Brien. And now Butler with it for Calgary. Flames have lost five and six. The Blues have won a season-high six in a row. As Schwartz makes a good play into Bollmeister. Winds up and fires it. And a save by Rama. And the Flames in a race here. Yuri Hudler gets to it. Here's Hudler. Centers it. Off a pad and then a save by Halak with his right leg. As that hits something in front. And now the Blues send it down the ice. Backus on the fourth check. He works Brody over. And then Schwartz tries it free. Now for Stewart. Deals it back. Jackman to Stewart. Wide open. Oh, what a save by Rommel on Stewart. What a pass by Barrett Jackman. Fake shot, firm pass right on the tape to Stewart. And now the Flames have it. Stewart was on that shift there, Darren. I'm not sure it was Oshie out there as well. I'm not sure if he took his normal shift or not. I see him on the end of the bench. As the Blues get the puck to center. Here comes Sabotka. He works and he scores! A laser, and the Blues take a 2 to nothing lead on the goal by Sabotka. What a wicked little wrister that is by Sabotka. Hardly had any noise when that puck left his tape. Just a heel-to-toe little wrister off the far side. He, he beats Monaghan through the neutral zone. Barely on side right there is Reeves. And then maybe utilizing the defenseman as a screen will get a better look here. Yeah. And I don't think that changed direction at all, but I may be wrong on that, but it's a seventh for Vladi Sabotka. And two goals in 2.05 
And the Blues lead 2-0. And Oshie is on the bench, but Darren, he's moved down to the end. Yeah. And, and I think Stewart took a shift on that last back a shift. Yeah, that, and, and hopefully he's all right. Yeah, and I think this could be just part of the part of the game plan. Obviously, when you're playing a player, Ken Hitchcock did tell us he's got to be 90%. I mean, it's up to the player and the trainer. Ken Hitchcock said this is Ray Barilli and this is and this is TJ Yoshi. And they will figure this out and I will trust their decision. But you know, as the game goes on, and the more the Blues can play with the lead in this game, the less he gets to play, which is good. Because you're going, as we mentioned, you're going back to back. It's not easy. And uh, and so we'll, we'll just monitor and see where he's at. Now, right away, it tells me now that because Reeves is on the line with Derek Roy and Morrow, that Ken Hitchcock is going to keep Stewart on the line with Backus and with Schwartz, as you picked up during that play. So doesn't look like he's in any pain, just having a good time supporting Sabotka when Sabotka fired that one in the net. And Sabotka now with points in four straight as he scores at 11.37, a seventh of the year from Barrett Jackman. And the Blues lead by two. And a hard pass to Cole on the center ice. That's flopped in by Roy. Morrow recovers it. Trying to go back to Roy. And the Flames break that up, and here they come to center ice. Now Butler. Intended for Hoodler, steered around by Cole, and that's captured by Morrow. And that's off a of skate and down the ice. Shots are now 10 to 4 in favor of the Blues, who lead 2 0 on goals by Stewart and Sabotka. Flames up the middle, Camilleri. He cuts in a shot, and that's off Petrangelo and wide. And now Oshi is on the ice here, so that's great to see. Checked by Backlund. Now Michael Backlund in front, broken up by Petrangelo. And now filtered ahead to Backus. Backus for Schwartz. And he'll play it back on the flame goal. Backus in the area. And he is all over his former teammate Stepniak. Goes to Oshie. In front, good move, a low shot. And a tricky shot, and Rommel made the save. Now play to the corner. Schwartz gets it for the Blues. On the cycle for Oshie. And he is stopped by Giordano and then played off the glass and over the glass by Stepniak. And we get a break in the action. 6.49 to go in the opening frame and a great start for the Blues. And hey, we're back here in Calgary. Blues lead 2-0. Well, so much talk about the Olympic rosters over the last few days. It's almost like we're hearing more about the snubs as opposed to the players who will actually be participating. And the first country that comes to mind is the Czech Republic. When you think about some of the players who made the team and some of the players who didn't. One is Roman Polak, who, of course, played for the Czech Republic in the 2010 Olympics. And, of course, the other one is Yuri Hutter here in Calgary. He's having a pretty good season. He's the third highest scoring player in the NHL from the Czech Republic, but he didn't make it either. In you know how difficult it is. Some of the jobs these guys have in putting together some of these rosters. But still, when you think of some of the NHL players who didn't make the Czech Republic, it's kind of hard to believe they weren't able to crack that roster. Yeah, no, no, no doubt about that. And, and for Yuri Hoodler, very disappointing knowing that an older player like Peter Nedved ends up making that team. But taking it a step further with Roman Polak, during Christmas last year, I mean, Roman Polak, during the lockout was at home with his family at Christmas time and the national team coach calls him. He rushes out, plays in the tournament for him. The coach tells him afterwards he was our best player and then he cuts him at the same time. So there's a lot of hurt feelings I'm sure from Roman Polak and well there should be. He certainly deserved to be on that team. Darren, when he got to the rink Monday morning and we found out he wasn't on the Czech team, here comes Kober, that's offside, but we went to Roma's locker, and he just said, I don't want to talk about it. Yep. He was not happy, to say the least, Yep. as we get some extracurricular activity here. McGratton and Ryan Reeves involved. And actually, Lapierre pushed down Westgarth first, I, I believe. There's going to be a minor penalty on the Blues. So two power plays for the Blues to start this game off. They went 0 for 2. Both their goals have come at even strength. But remember on that first shift when uh, Westgarth went right into the scrum, right in front of Yaroslav Halak after the whistle, stirring things up. So it's an interesting line for Bob Hartley with the 
muscle that they have. And here, Ladislav Speed has a conversation with Reeves, but there is Westgarth. He skates right over from the other side. And then right here, McGratton looks over there, and Lapierre gave McGratton a shot from behind. I, I thought it was Westgarth. Sorry, John Kelly, you did say it was McGratton. My fault. And uh, that starts things up. Well, at this particular point in the game, there's no need for Ryan Reeves to drop the mitts. It's, it's the job of McGratton and Westgarth to get things going. They're down 2 nothing. It's not the job of Ryan Reeves in this situation. And, and Lapierre did get a minor for that hit of the flame player, as we saw on that last replay. I think it was behind the play a little bit more, right here. This is the play here. Oh, you're right. I'm sorry. Yeah. And, and again, it was just a, he follows his man. The man had released the puck, and he gives him a little nudge into the boards, much like what happened, although not quite as hard as the hit that Stepniak gave on Petrangelo, but same type of call. It's interference. It's a play had already been, puck had already been passed along. So the Flames go in the power play down 2 nothing. In their power play, 14% on the year. That's 27th in the NHL. As Hoodler winds it around for Giordano. Chopped up in the air by Bomeister, but not out of the zone. Now center, Bomeister blocks it. And he goes back on the goal and around to Bacchus, who hammers it down the ice. Now, good play by Bomeister. Really skating hard. Bomeister had a real good start to that game last night in Edmonton. I think both players, though, as the game wore on, maybe ran out a little bit of gas anyway, but. Nonetheless, pretty big couple of days for both of them, obviously being new to the Canadian Olympic team. You know what, Darren? I was right. I was half right. Lapierre did get a penalty for that interference on the flame player. He got a double minor, interference and in roughing. So the one penalty in the offensive zone, and then he took another one in his own zone. Yeah, the one when, when he hit McGratton from behind. Right, so... So you were... I was half right. Well, I think you're always more than just half right. I would have given you three quarters. I appreciate that. So a double liner here for the Flames. As Halak plays it, puts it high. Cut off by Jackman. Surrounded by two red jerseys. Now Holborn lost it. Jackman hammers it all the way down the ice. Flames two for 11 in two games against the Blues. And of course they had the tying goal on December 23rd on the power play. That's tipped by a, a stick, I believe, back as it goes out of play. Good, good start to the penalty kill here. Only four shots on goal for the Calgary Flames. Nothing sustained. Weren't able to get things set up. They tried one little backhand pass between the legs. It got snuffed out by the Blues penalty kill unit. The Flames have not had a shot since the 310 mark of the first period. The Blues have hit the last 10 shots on goal. As Bomeister rifles it all the way down the ice. And the Blues have killed off the first half of the Lapierre double minor. Now the Flames turn it over at center ice. And now Hoodler has to go back. He is watched by Oshi. And then Giordano slows it down. The Blues have killed 12 in a row of the last four games. That's dumped in. Bomeister there. Now for Petrangelo, and with lots of time, he oh, gets it play. at the line, but not out. Held in by Giordano. And now Hoodler sets it up. Giordano for wide minute shot, and a pass saved by Halak. Had no idea where it was. He went to the corner. And Weidman, as we know, can really shoot it. And the Flames recover it down low. Now for Camilleri. These two guys are like water bugs, aren't they? They are tricky. Now Weidman. Flames Giordano a pass in front for Hoodler just off the mark. This all started when Petrangelo tried to get it deep and Giordano did a great job of keeping it in. And now Weidman again shuffles away from Sabotka with a minute to go in the double minor. Weidman again a shot and a stick saved by Halak and it's chopped away by Sabotka and that goes all the way down the ice. I'm sure Petrangelo's going to the bench right now got to be frustrated because he, he, he was doing the right thing, trying to get it the length of the ice, but give Giordano a lot of credit for the way he kept that puck in. And now it's Camilleri. Here's Backlund for Butler. Butler to the front, intended for Byron. Just off his stick. And Schwartz will kill some more time. And 25 to go in the Flames' power play. And 2.45 left first period. 
Now play to head to back with a first round pick in 07. One of only four drafted players on this Flames roster. As Byron gets it deep. Ian Cole back first. And then Jackman trying to fight off a four check. Kept in though. Giordano not a back one. This shot. Tipped by Berglund. And that goes high. And the Blues get their man back. That's LaPierre. And they kill off the double minor. With only two shots against. And a drive by Berglund is on goal. And a save by Ramo. And as back as is driving hard to the net. Giordano kind of lassoed him a little bit. And that continues on. So a good, solid penalty kill by the Blues, who have taken a 2-0 lead. Thank you, sir. Oshie, by the way, has played five and a half minutes in this opening period. Blues win the faceoff. Here is Stewart. Stewart in front. Oh, and Roy almost tipped that in midair. And now Roy gets it again. Backlund recovers for Calgary. On for Camilleri, then walked to center by Vladislav Schmid, who's playing in his 500th NHL game. And he will go to the Olympics, representing the Czech Republic. His dad is a former Olympian, 50 years ago. As the Blues tip it in, now Camilleri with plenty of time for Galliardi. Down the wall against Bobeister. And then staging trying to center one. That's blocked by Berglund. And a good job by the big Swede. And then it's dumped in by Petrangelo, who's hit by Boma. Again, Boma's done a good job along the wing. That's what you expect for your winger. The left winger not supposed to like the right defenseman. He's done a good job on Petrangelo. And well, now the Blues break it up at their own line. That center, now Boma gets it again. But Galliardi was in on left wing. And we get a stoppage. And for Alex Petrangelo, this is well shorthanded. So he's trying to fire that right up the middle there to Oshi on the penalty kill. But it gets kept, it's kept in there by Giordano. So here's the first shot against. And now it's probably another 40 seconds in, in the defensive zone for the Blues. Two good saves there by Yaroslav Halak. He doesn't quite see where that rebound went. He thought it was under his pads. He's been flirting with a new set of pads as well. So... And, and, and not playing for five games. There's always some adjustments to be made. Under a minute now in the first period. ARB in there with LaPierre. And then Reeves enters the picture. And then LaPierre again. Out near the Shattenkirk point. That's tipped out of midair. And then back in to laid offside. And here's Byron for the rookie Monaghan, who's only 19. Hands on to Hoodler. And then Jackman breaks it up. Good play by the veteran. And now on for Schwartz. And the final 15 here in the first period. Shattenkirk. Cross corner Duncan. And then Backus over skates it. And that allows the Flames Backlund to get it back to center ice. And that will do it as Shattenkirk kills the remaining seconds in the opening period and a good one for the Blues. Well, considering the Blues had the first two power plays, nothing going there. They snuffed out the double minor against Max Lapierre. But uh, at even strength, Stewart and Sabotka score the only goals. And we're going to talk to that little man with gumption. Shots 12-6 in favor of the Blues in the first period. Stewart and Sabotka have the goals. Our first intermission is next here on Fox Sports Midwest. First period goals from Stewart and Sabotka. And the Blues in search of their seventh straight win. They lead the Flames 2 nothing after 20. John and Darren back in the broadcast. But the Blues had an off day yesterday and had some fun with that hanger size camera that was around practice. Hanger size camera? You know where we borrowed that from? No. Barrett Jackman. Nice. Gave us his little GoPro that we were able to utilize. Fun. Off day. Show the people what goes on. So know what we did? We strapped it onto the big boy, the bad man. The bad man, Patrick Berglund's <laughs> lid. And he put us through a little bit of a skate right here on the ice yesterday. You guys want to see how you score? Bryson! Hey, Bryson. 
say something. <laughs> look at you. Look how ugly you are. You're so ugly. People see you now. I'm strong. This is what happens when I want to. Everybody, look at Panger. What a mud. <laughs> Patrick Berglund is. <laughs> Blues Hockey brought to you by Bud Light. It's a sure sign of a good time. Here we go. How many times did Bergie call people a mutt? He called my little Ottawa buddy, Derek Roy, a mutt. He called me a mutt. He wants to be now known, and this is Swedish word, okay? So it's just Swedish. He wants to be known as Tufing Berglund. What does that mean? I, I can't tell you. I can't tell you, but it's Tufing. That's, that's Swedish. Here's a drive by Brody on goal and a save by Halak. See, I, I think that Berglund's trying to change the way he is. He's a nice guy, he's a big guy, he's an easygoing guy, a great teammate. But I think Berglund wants to be known more of a guy with a little bit of an edge to it. You know, that kind of that bad uh, guy? Bad, you know what I mean? Right. Yeah. So maybe a, a big guy with gumption? That, that could be it. Yeah, he's looking for a little bit more Saboka in, in the way he acts and not. But I think he's more talking about the way he acts around his teammates. Good save there with the right pad. Wow. That was tipped on Weidman shot. Now the Blues back to center ice. And here is the little guy with Gumption. Sabotka. Played back of the goal, Tarasenko. In a race with Schmid, and Schmid wins it. And gets it onto center ice. Now Bo Meester for Petrangelo. Tarasenko into Sabotka. And he works in tight angle. Oh, Bo Meester runs! Save there. Oh, that's not right. After all that great playmaking, open net, that's not right. That save was a beauty. Bowmeister had a wide open net. And now the Blues are back in delayed offside. And now we get the whistle. Well, Sabotka told us after the first period that he was a little surprised that his shot went in. I think he's more surprised this one did not go in. What a pull-up move here. A tremendous pass. And even though Byron's all over Bolmeister here, he puts it back into the body of the goaltender, Rommel. Rommel's looking behind him the whole way. Again, Bolmeister will play in the Olympics for the second time in his career. He played in 06 in Italy. Although was not initially on the club, he was a late addition when Scott Niedermeyer got hurt in 06. And the Canadians lost in the quarterfinals to the Russians. As Backlund steers the puck to center ice. Now to Camilleri. Waits a shot by Stepniak. And a save by Halak. And how that stayed out, I have no idea because Backlund looked like slid into Halak and Stepniak who hasn't scored in 14 games, can't buy a goal. you got to keep in mind that a goaltender's only job is watching the puck. So he's not focused on what's coming towards him. His, his focus is on just the release of the, of the pass or the shot. And there's the pass by Camilleri right to Stampniak. By this moment, he doesn't know that Backlund's on top of him there. But Backlund doesn't even... Boy, did Backlund just not know where the crease was? Or did Jackman give him that big of a shove? Well, he's in the box because of that shove. I know Jackman was the first to go over to Yaroslav Halak and, and pat him on the pads. That's a heck of a save, though. Flames 0 for 2 tonight. Sabotka wins the faceoff, and the puck is cleared down the ice. The Blues won 60% of the draws in the first period. Now it is Giordano for Camilleri. And he'll dart in. Up front with Backlund, who gets it back with the goal. Also, Colborn. And now it's taken by Petrangelo, and he fires it right up the middle and all the way down the ice. Yeah, he was certainly going to make sure that one got airborne and all the way down. 
You don't want to e extend holding on to the puck, you know, when you put yourself in a position, if you're going to get drilled, that, that's no fun. Get rid of it quickly and don't allow the player to come in tight to you. And yeah, then a good hit by Berglund on Dennis Weidman. Now the puck goes on top of the Blues goal with 112 left in the power play. Now, Calgary's very tricky on the odd man breaks, and Camilleri does a great job of pulling up. But for Halak here, we, we really thought that, boy, that must have been quite a shove then by Jackman. And uh, on further review, further review from, the, from another angle anyway, it, it certainly doesn't appear as if Jackman gave him that much of a shove. And off the draw, Giordano for Monaghan. He gets it back again. Flames work it down low now for Hoodler, the former Red Wing. Giordano with it to Brody. And Brody slows it down with 50 left in the power play. Around to Hoodler. Giordano again, a drive. Pad save, a lock, rebound. And Brody had it, but that went over the goal. And then a good hit on the near side by Oshi. And then Monaghan is worked over by Shattenkirk. Now Giordano's wide open. He works in, a shot, and a good save by Halak with his arm. And the puck came back in front of now, fired away by the Blues. Yeah, good play by Shattenkirk right there. He had the calmness, no panic in his hands, and was able to get it out on the backhand. And now Hoodler late on this power play. He'll set it up again. Hoodler to the front. Intended for staging. Now Galliardi gets it back. Here's Brody for Giordano. And then Brody. Works in closer to Giordano. Takes it. Off the goal post. Hummer had a wide open goal. Hit the post. Now Brody again. Fires it in a save by Halak. Got his arm up. And now Jackman is back. And the Flames keep the pressure on. And that's blocked by Shattenkirk. And he'll take the icing here after the Flames. Hit a goal post with a wide open net. Now we'll see if Ken Hitchcock calls a timeout right here. His goalie's out of gas. His defensemen are out of gas. That was a long extended power play against the Blues. The Calgary Flames had great chances. Great chances. And there's the save with traffic there. And then obviously that one here that brings off the pipe. Hoodler can't believe it. He stays on one knee for a little bit of time. And yes, Ken Hitchcock does call a timeout. And this is just merely for rest purposes here. So for Yuri Hoodler, he was the one that made that great pass. What, with uh, how many seconds? Five seconds left? Yep. At 19.55 to Giordano for the one-timer. And a similar play there he gets the pass from Giordano. And it's right on the tape. And he can't believe that that misses to the far side and hits the pipe and out of play. Shots are 5-1 Calgary in this second period. And Hoodler leads the club with 35 points. The Flames shut out in their last game. And they've been shut out a lot of late. As a matter of fact, four times in their last six games and five in their last ten, they've been blanked. And Bob Hartley was telling us this morning they had not been shut out until mid-December until this terrible run of shutout hockey. And he can't he can't understand it, but uh, he jinxed it. Yeah, he did. <laughs> As the puck comes in front, and now it's knocked away. And we'll get a whistle. But yeah, Hartley's club was not blanked until mid-December. Boston did it. And since then, they've been shut out five times in ten games. Well, he certainly has this team playing a, a good hard style. i got to give Bob Hartley and his coaching staff a lot of credit. I mean, this is not the biggest team. They're not the most talented team. But, man, they, they get ready. They prepare. They've got enthusiasm, and it's not easy to have that when you're not having that success and losing that amount of one-goal games and being involved in that amount of one-goal games. Hitchcock called them a hard-working, organized team. Yep. As the Blues come in, Bomeister. And a drive on goal, and a save by Rama. And that's Bomeister's second good chance in this period. Now Morrow in front almost stole it from Butler. Bounces back to Petrangelo. All the way around to Stewart, who scored the Blues' first goal. And he blows a tire. Yeah, yeah. Those happy feet did right over there, and he fell over. And now Butler's shot. That's wide by a large margin. Played by Bomeister. Now for Stewart. Not out, though. And then Hoodler gets it for Calgary. Right in front, a shot. And that was blocked. And then Butler a drive, and that's blocked again. And Roy will slow it down for the Blues. Not sure if that was on purpose, but good collapsing down low by the team in the white. 
And uh, Derek Roy down in a defensive position, and it looked like it went off either the shaft of his stick or maybe Brendan Walls. Oh, Petrangelo just broke his stick uh -oh. on a clearing attempt, but he got it out, and now Payarvi flies it. That gives Payarvi to the net. Oh, what a save by Ramo! After a brilliant move by Payarvi. And he gets it again. Payarvi. All he had to do was elevate that. Great speed going down the wing, though. What a play. That was Reeves. To the sweet Payarvi. And then the Flames get it back, and Brody oh. threw his legs to Backlund. Nice pass. And now into Stepniak. That shot, a pass saved by Halak. Steered it wide enough. Payarvi gets it off the boards. But then Lapierre loses it. And it bounces back to center ice. And we'll keep in mind that Lapierre hit from behind on... On McGratton in that first period. We'll see if that doesn't stir it up here in the second. Well, two flames collide. Colborne gives it up. And the Blues the other way for Bergwood. But Weidman there. Chased by Bergwood. And now turning is Ladislav Schmid. Stretch pass for Westgarth. Tipped into the blue zone. Handled by Cole. And Ian Cole now reverses for Jackman. Up the middle, good pass to Bergwin. And now fed up the middle. It's Sabota coming in again. And he stops to make the play. Back to Cole. Now for Tarasenko, back to Cole. And that shot blocked. Bounces near the goal and recovered by Bergwin. Bergwin on the cycle. Now Bacchus swoops in and knocks Schmied down. And Cole keeps it in. Tarasenko back of the cage. And he's got some room. Walks right in front. Oh. The call. Shoots. He scores. What a play. And Cole buries it after a brilliant feed by Tarasenko. That is patience like you read about from Vladdy Tarasenko. He's a shooter of the puck. And last year, he would have fired this one here without a doubt. But now he's got the calmness and the patience. Before that, Payarvi does an unbelievable job going around Mark Giordano and then making a great save by the goaltender and there's the pass there by Tarasenko and Ian Cole the former first rounder from Notre Dame just lets that one rip he was not going to make any mistake on that one good hard wrist shot by Cole better set up by Tarasenko his second of the year's other goal came in San Jose on November 29th and now the Flames are offside, but they won't come much easier than that as Tarasenko put it on a plate and a platter for Ian Cole. And that was quite appetizing in the back of the net. Bring out the blue. Oh, I love that blue sweater to the left right there. Some avid Blues fans taking part. Great seats, too. Right on the... Right, uh, right on... Ice level. Right on the glass. Gotta love that. There's this great pass by Tarasenko. He's waiting and waiting, waiting to get somebody to go towards him. And he got the bite he was waiting for, and that was McGrath. And so the closer McGrath got to him, the, new, the more he knew he had time and space to get it to Ian Cole, who jumped in and uh, made no mistake. Cole's first goal in 16 games, and for Tarasenko, that extends his point streak to five games, and that ties his career high. So it's 3 nothing for the Blues. As Schwartz has it in his own line now for Oshie. And he'll chip one all the way around the goal. Good hit by Schwartz. Oshie played almost six minutes in that first period. Coming off that knee injury. And now the Flames exit the zone with Brody. Back in front, tip by Brody, and a glove save by Halak. And now we have Boma in front. And he is pushed away from the blue paint by Bacchus. Well, is the most physical player on the Calgary Flames. They only gave him credit for one hit in the first period. We had him for four hits in the first period. Makes a nice pass right here, trying to get it to Brody, the defenseman. And Yaroslav Halak reaches back to his left, does a nice job. Listen, hidden in all this 3-0 lead, Yaros made some very good saves in net. And in the same kind of goaltending performance, Brian Elliott has just been absolutely outstanding. And the goaltending has been good on the road. Oh, look out. A shot there. Oh, that hit Petrangelo? Yeah, it did. And that was off the stick of O'Brien. And Petrangelo stays on the ice. That's a good sign. Now it comes back to 
the King City, Ontario native. That shot wide. And now Reeves down low. Punches one back of the goal for Pay Arby. And then it's Lapierre again. Worked over by Hoodler. Pay Arby trying to emerge with it. And now Lapierre gets it. Hoodler is all over him. Now Pay Arby and Reeves get it back of the goal. But that's chopped away. Good play by Chris Butler. And Bollmeister bounces into the point. That goes low. Now Bollmeister again. A good shift here by this Lapierre line. And then O'Brien for Butler. And they finally work it onto center ice. Now Hoodler tips it in for Monaghan. And his low shot, easy save there for Halak. And now Morrow back the other way. That's the eighth shot on goal by Calgary in the second period. This is cut off by Roy for Stewart. Stewart to Morrow. And that failed to click. And it's off a stick and back to center. Now we get a whistle and a slashing minor. And I believe it's against the Blues. Looks like the veteran Brendan Morrow's heading off. Thank you, number 10 minor penalty slash. Slashing call on Morrow, who was part of the gold medal winning Canadian team in 2010. In the gold medal game, he played alongside Ryan Getzlaff and Corey Perry. That's the slash they're going to call right there on the side of the pants of Dennis Weidman. I'm sure Brendan Moore is the first to tell you that he's going to, go to the box for that. He's done a lot worse. Mm -hmm. I'm sure a lot <laughs> worse. <laughs> and gotten away with it. Flames 0 for 3 tonight. Oh, didn't get my money's worth on that two minutes. And then Bacchus creates a turnover. Fired in by Petrangelo. And again, Brody and Giordano the point man. Up front, Hoodler. With Stepniak and Monaghan. It goes to Monaghan. Their first round pick this year. Now wide open in front. And a lock got over. And he stoned Stepniak again. And the Blues shoot it down the ice. Good play by Yaro Halak. You don't often see him extend his stick like that in a for a poke check. But he did that. And that might have hurried up the shot a little bit. Boy, Stepniak had a tough year. Here's Giordano a drive. That's turned away. Had a broken foot earlier. Now is in a goalless draw to 14. Now Brody back to the line. It goes to Giordano in front. And that pass for Backlund broken up and then fired up the middle. And then Lapierre gets it out, but it's off a stick and off his stick and over the boards at the Calgary bench. Now there's a reason why Giordano is on the radar for Team Canada. As you see, the poke check and then the butterfly by Yaroslav Halak on Stempniak. So a good chance. Stempniak's had a couple of good chances in this game. And that plus-minus ratings, something that these players take a lot of pride in, but he's a minus 20. And take a look at Yaroslav Alok, his home road record. Lions control the faceoff, 50 to go in the power play. And now it is Backlund. Out high for Butler. And then Dennis Weidman gets it. Weidman throws it low. Backlund for Butler. And that shot blocked by David Backus. And Butler... Has to go all the way back in his own zone. Past the midway point of the second period. Blues goals tonight from Stewart. The both get in Cole. And they lead 3-0. Now Camilleri in for Stepniak. Dropped off Butler across. One-timer by Weidman. And a pad saved by Halak. And that goes out of play. Calgary Flames are doing a good job of setting up these one-timers. And as we all know, Dennis Weidman can really let it rip. A real heavy shot, good hand-eye coordination. Long pass by Butler. And maybe maybe it's coming a little bit slow for him. But David Back is frustrated there. He blocked that, that attempted play on the PK. And maybe he was just checking to make sure that that twig was broken. See, if you don't do that, unfortunately... If you don't do that, then you get on the ice and you've got a, a, a point in your stick. It's going to be weak and it's going to snap at an inopportune time. Well, Petrangelo broke his stick on a soft pass earlier in this period. Yeah, and you know the reason why. He either got slashed at one point or he blocked the shot with it. And now the Flames, or the Blues, are back at full strength. Flames 0 for 4 on the power play with 7 shots. Did not get a shot on that last power play. So Morrow is back. And that's lobbed in, and Ramo has to be careful there. And sets it up back of the goal for Brody. And John Kelly, your best penalty killer so often has to be your goaltender. There's no question about that. Very seldom is it not. 
And Yaroslav Halak has been very sharp on the PK. A lot of point-blank chances. And Boma right back in for Calgary. Drop pass. And a shot by Galliardi. Then he's hit by Morrow. Flame center. Right in the blue paint. It's swallowed up by Halak. And now we get pushing again. That's Morrow involved with Stajan and Boma. Blues lead 3 0 here in the middle frame. And welcome back to Calgary. Coming up on January 15th in this very same building, it'll be the annual CHL Top Prospects game. The game will feature the top 40 prospects who are draft eligible for the upcoming NHL draft. And this year's roster features two players from St. Louis, one being Ryan McKinnis, of course, the son of the Hall of Famer, Al, Al McKinnis. He's got a ton of offensive upside. And the other being Blake Clark, who's in his second year of the OHL. Last year, Blake was a second-team All-OHL rookie performer. And, of course, both players are expected to go very high in the upcoming draft. They also grew up playing for Al McKinnis. And, of course, the draft is coming up in June. Now. And it will be in Philadelphia this year. And I'm sure as the Flames go offside, that will be a huge thrill for Al and Jackie to see their son drafted in the NHL. And what a player he was and what the team they had. Of course, as you mentioned, Darren, they lost in the finals in 86, won in 89. And if it weren't for a club... About three hours north of here in Edmonton, they would have won a lot more than one cup in the 80s. Well, I remember the first time I played against Al McGinnis in junior hockey. He's played for the Kitchener Rangers. And the first time he fired one at me, I said, this is the big boys league I'm facing now. When I saw that, that slap shot that he had then, and then it just getting better and better and better. And uh, one point in my playing career, he actually cut my collarbone open with a slap shot. Your collarbone. Collarbone. He didn't break it. He cut it. Cut it. Well, you're lucky he didn't break it. I, yeah, well, I'm so strong. I, that's why I didn't break. Well, of course. Here comes Tarasenko. Speaking of strong, a shot, and that goes high and out of play. And now Ryan McGinnis, his son, playing for the Kitchener Rangers. So all of the family. Well, for Vladdy Tarasenko, he was once that kind of player. Uh, you know, a prospect growing up, a high-end prospect at age of 16 is playing in the KHL. That's quite a league to play in as a 16-year-old. Most kids are maybe, if they're elite players, they're playing major junior A. In the United States, they'd be playing the USHL or maybe the North American Hockey League. He was playing with men in the KHL, for crying out loud. Vladdy is one of seven first-rounders in the Blues lineup tonight, drafted by the Blues in the first round. The drafting has been special. There is no question about that, and it's great to see Doug Armstrong and his entire scouting staff here. They're going to get together and have a few meetings, make sure they're all prepared. Yeah, the pro staff will go up to Bant for a few days, and then the amateur staff will get together in the next five days. Sort of the midterm meetings for the Blues professional and amateur scouts. Now Reeves wanders into the Calgary zone. On for Payarvi. His pass to the front, added away by Iwamo. And now the Flames quickly to center ice. Then big Brian McGrath. And that ends up back on the goal. Reeves a collision there with Kevin Westgard. A lot of big boys on the ice here. And then flipped by Shattenkirk. And ahead to LaPierre. Now Payarvi again. Had a glorious chance earlier. Ducks away from Brody's check. Now to Bacchus. A drive on goal and a save by Rommel. That was tipped. And the Flames shoot it high back down the ice. Here's Cole. And that pass bounces on Oshie, but no icing here. 6.35 to go in the second period. And the Blues enjoy a 3-0 lead. Leopold back against Galliardi. Monahan wide open in front, and Boma fanned on it oh. from 10 feet out. No coverage in front of the net. Boma's all alone. That doesn't happen very often in the blue zone. And now it is Oshie. And he gets free right in front. Schwartz trying to jam it in. And now Schwartz again. Boy, the Flames have had... I'm going to say at least five great eight chances in this second period. Absolutely, they have. And here's Boma once again. Galliardi. That pass blocked by a slotting Petrangelo. And now ahead to Schwartz. And here is Stewart. Stewart slowed up. 
And then winds it back to the flame goal. And Ramos sets it up for Butler. Off the boards, Galliardi tips one to center ice. And during the challenge for the Blues is to keep the foot on the gas pedal. Don't let up here. A lot of hockey have been played in No this question game. about that. Not against this Calgary team. I, I know that you look at the, you know, the conference standings and all that, but uh, they're a team that they do play with a lot of heart, and they came back the last time the Blues were here on the 23rd of December. Yeah, down by two in the third period. They won in a shootout. Now Backlund gets it out. And the other part about it, John, is that you do have a game tomorrow night. The, the bigger the lead, the more you get to rest some players. You don't put yourself in a vulnerable spot, blocking a shot late in the game, getting hurt, taking that extra hit that you don't have to take. What you want to do is try to eliminate any kind of will and passion out of the Calgary Flames game. And now the Flames are offside with 4.55 left in the second period of the Blues, up by three. Love to play these Canadian clubs. They are 8-0-4 this year against teams from Canada. And leading 3-0 here. And that is dumped in by Schmid. A lock now for Cole. Tarasenko kicking it out. A shot tip just wide by Hudler. And now Tarasenko leaves it in the corner. Sabota gets a piece of this. No icing. No, because the defenseman pinched. That's what happened. Vladislav Smith pinched as the puck was going by the boards. Now Bergman down low to Tarasenko. And a shot handled by Ramo. Tarasenko in front again to Bergman. That was on goal. Tarasenko played against Ramo in the KHL two years ago. And now Tarasenko heads off. Heading up the ice is Byron. He is stripped of the line by Leopold. And now Bergman right back the other way. And he stops to make a play. It's Sabotka down low. Fights off the Colborne check. In the slot to Berglund. And too many Flames are there to break it up. And the Flames to center ice. Colborne puts it by Bo Meester. And then he's wrapped up by Big Bo. With 3.45 to go in the second period. Now it's O'Brien. And his pass back for Butler. And his drive blocked away by Halak. And then Petrangelo gets it back. Good play to Sabotka, who has had a long shift here. Yeah, he really has had a long shift. And I, I think the Blues can do themselves a favor making those quick, short passes, supporting each other, and getting out of the zone in more of a hurry. They've had an extended piece of time in their own zone. Because of that, they turn the puck over. And Yarrow has had to make some terrific saves. And now you look at it, Cowers had 20 shots on goal. That one might have been the easiest one. This one was a very difficult play. That a nice little play in tight on Stemniak. Good hard shot by Weidman. Easy save there by Yaroslav Halak. He had one just before that against Giordano on the one-timer as well. He's been good. His last appearance before tonight was December 28th against Chicago. Yeah, he had 13 shots against, gave up the 10, and it was a 6-5 win from behind. But TJ Oshie not happy with Boma. See, Boma's getting under the, he's getting under the skin. He's rattling some pans and shaking, shaking him around a little bit there as far as the blues are concerned. And it all started with the first shift from Boma with a couple of big hits on the Trangel. But on the left side, you see... Oshie's trying to get inside position on Boma. Boma's job is to get inside position on Oshie. Oh, he kind of uses his skate and pushes Oshie's skate ahead. And that's why Oshie took exception to it. And the Flames are the power play for the fifth time. As Brody swings back. For the Blues, it is Bacchus, Schwartz, Petrangelo, and Bomeister. And that's broken up by Schwartz and now recovered by Bacchus. And he comes in with Schwartz. To Schwartz right in front, and he was checked, and he was sliding to the boards. And thankfully gets right back on his skates and goes to the Blues bench. But he went fairly hard. And now the Flames work it back on the goal. Comes around to Brody. Now Camilleri, blind pass, right on the tape of Petrangelo. And he'll pick his way to center ice and then scoop it in. Yeah, that, that, that is actually not a common pass by Camilleri. He's very patient. He's a good passer of the puck. And he was looking for Bulma behind Petrangelo. Petrangelo easily picked that off. And a minute to go in the Oshi minor. And it's worked down low by Cole, away from Stepniak. 
And now Barrett Jackman, hard off the glass and over Weidman's head, and that goes the distance. And the Flames again with Giordano. They've had some good chances on this power play tonight. Seven shots total in the first four opportunities. Now Jackman and Sabotka try to get it away from Monaghan. Jackman has it, but nowhere to go. He's trapped in there. And now it's in the skates of Sabotka. And all the while, the time ticks down on the Oshie Minor with 15 to go. This is fine for the Blues here. Yeah, I, I don't understand why the referees don't pull these things down, to be honest with you. I agree. This is stupid. Finally, it comes back to the line now for Butler. Winds up, and a good save by Halak with his arm. And the Flames center it. Oh, she's back on the ice. So the Blues kill it off. And here comes Bergwin. Chris crosses with Oshie a shot. Flames had one shot on that last power play. Now over five. In the final minute of the second period. Elroy back to Shattenkirk. And that shot is tipped by a flame stick, and that goes into the netting. Well, just prior to that very good blocker saved by Halak on Butler. Keep your eye on this buttery little saucer pass right on the tape to Schwartz, and he just lost his footing, blew a tire, and goes hard into the boards. That had to hurt. He went in there in a sol solid way on the side of his body. Good save by Rommel, better pass by Bacchus. Schwartz had his eight-game point streak in the other night in Edmonton. Picked off at center ice by Stewart. And it's Giordano, the first man back. Now for Stajan. And then for Boma. Leopold in a foot race against Galliardi. And he does a good job. And now Roy fights off Stajan, who's lost his stick. And the Blues to center ice. Penalty coming up here. This one will go against the Flames. And a holding minor. Listen to the call by the referee, Brad Watson. Well, after Stajan had lost his stick, that was the issue there, right, right by the bench to Bob Hartley. And he'd lost his twig there, and then he decides to hold on and finish off his check. But referee's there. Now Stajan goes for a, a stick from the bench. He gets the stick, but he's already called for the minor for holding. And the Blues 0 for 2. Flames clear it down the ice. Only 10 to go in the period. Five seconds, Petrangelo for Oshie. See if he can get a shot here. Dropped off. Petrangelo fires it at the buzzer. That would have counted. What a great setup that is. That's good to practice that anyway and show that urgency. Get in the zone if you're in a game that's tied and there's only five seconds remaining. You, you know what kind of plays you can make. That was a good setup right there. Blues out shot 15 to 10 in that second period, but the Blues get the only goal in the second by Ian Cole. And after Stewart and Zabotka scored in the first period. So we have played two periods in Calgary, and the Blues enjoy a 3 nothing lead. The Blues looking to win their seventh in a row. They enjoy a 3 nothing lead after 40 minutes here in Calgary. John Darren back in the broadcast. Pitch. The Blues have fired 22 shots on Kari Rama. He has been really good tonight, or it could be 5 or 6 nothing. Yeah, there's no question about that. I, mean, I think the Blues end up wearing down goaltenders, too, and eventually you're going to make a bit of a mental mistake. So there's probably one goal, Saboka's, that he wants back that made it a 3 nothing game. But, boy, has he made some brilliant saves. And you got to credit the Blues because they, they, they have perseverance when when attacking the net. So they get robbed early on. But you could see that they, the confidence was growing. They're going to keep driving to the net. No no question that Ramos made some phenomenal saves. This is that shot by Saboka. That's our Mazda drive to the net. And why wouldn't it be? By the Olympian. Vladi Saboka, who's had a, another strong game here for the Blues. And so is the goaltender, Yaroslav Halak. And the Blues will have a power play for first 142. Of this third period, Blues win leading after two, 20 0 and 3. The Flames win trailing 1 18 and 2. 
So a power play to begin things for the Blues. It is Sabotka, Bourbon and Tarasenko with Petrangelo and Shattenkirk on defense. Flames win the faceoff and clear it down the ice. And Halak sets it up for Petrangelo. And a goal here would really be big for the Blues. Now Sabotka swings into the offensive zone. Chased by Butler. And then back to Shattenkirk. Now Giordano trying to tip it around. Here's Tarasenko at the line, and that is off the stick of Shattenkirk. And now back to center ice. Shattenkirk again in for Sabotka. He goes wide. Trying to hook it back and off Giordano and just wide of the post. Yeah, he was looking for Tarasenko, the late man. And now it goes in behind the flame goal, grabbed by Butler, but he can't get a lot on it. Held in by Shattenkirk for Tarasenko. Nice pass to Shattenkirk again. And he goes out high. And a long wrist shot. Bounces in front to Petrangelo. And that step shot was off a leg. And then tipped in the corner. Played by the Flames up the boards. Gloved down by Shattenkirk. Now Petrangelo winds up and fires it. He scores! It may have been tipped. And Petrangelo a power play goal. Good movement on the offensive side of it and a lucky break for the Blues as that shot there from a long distance by Petrangelo wobbles, hops, and bumps. And like a lacrosse ball gets behind the goaltender, Ramo. And we'll see if Berglund gets a piece of it or not. Here's the shot. It goes off the stick earlier than Berglund. The stick before this here, it goes down maybe off Boma as he's sliding down, and then it hits the ice downwards and then hops upwards like a lacrosse bounce shot right there. Almost a change-up on Ramo. Yeah. And the Blues get a power play goal and lead 4-0. So that power play with 10 seconds remaining in the second period, you start the third with nice fresh ice and a good play there by Shattenkirk to Petrangelo. So the Blues striking the power play and lead by four. Now back is for Oshi. That's tipped wide of the goal. Petrangelo does get the goal from Shattenkirk at 1-16. And he had his first goal in 29 games the other night. So the Blues with a power play marker here to break it open. Petrangelo scored the Blues' last goal in Saturday's win against Columbus. Yeah, it came in the, Calgary, 15, the sixth rookie. goal of the game for Petrangelo. It came at 14-13 of that contest. And now he gets another chance on the power play, paired with another right-hander, the U.S. Olympian, Kevin Shattenkirk. Boy, they've got some great chemistry on that point together, that's for sure. And now Westcarth goes off. And I'm not sure exactly what he did. But the Blues go right back on the power play. They're one for three. They hit Ian Cole. It's a high hit on Ian Cole, and the referee was right there. So the Blues operate with the man advantage. Here's Roy, and he was checked by Backlund and surrounded by three Blues, a bouncer, and that's scooped up by Halak on a tricky play by Backlund. Well, that play, Halak wants to play it, but with pressure right on Stewart, Stewart was the closest man to him. There's no way that you want to play that over to him just to rush it out of your zone. But often from a goalie standpoint, you don't want to smother that up. You don't want to face off in your own zone while you're on the power play. But Halak had no choice. And the Blues win the faceoff. Shattenkirk had his stick knocked out of his hands. Wanted a call, but there was none. And now the Flames in Boma went for a shot, but he had it tipped away at the last second. Again, that last goal, Petrangelo from Shattenkirk at 1-16. And now the Blues lose it. And here comes Stage and shorthanded breakaway. And checked by Derek Roy at the last second. Good play by Roy. And, and not to take a minor penalty. Players already on a breakaway. And, uh, but you give it that last second effort. And good job. Stick on stick. Knocking the puck away from Matt Stajan. And now Shattenkirk to center ice. Tarasenko picks his way into the zone. 
And he'll play it back for Bowmeister. And now Sabotka sets it up. 45 to go in the power play. Tarasenko again. He moves in and a shot off the arm of Romo. Then he covers it. A lot of options there for Tarasenko. And he makes the right decision. He was running out of room. So you, you don't want to make the play die right there. After this little cycle here, he's got Saboka to his right or he's got a shot on goal because Big Berglund's right there. And here's the play again by Derek Roy. Stick right there on puck. Makes a great play. Yarrow was there with the right pad, but it never does get to him. And now it's kicked back by Sabotka to Bolmeister. And then Tarasenko again. Now Sabotka. Berglund's in front. Tarasenko on the give and go. That miss. Now Leopold with it. Across Tarasenko. He scores! What a blast and what a play. And the Blues score another power play goal. This one by Tarasenko. That's all world right there. That pass by Jordan Leopold was fantastic. The setup's on the right side of the ice for Tarasenko and Sabotka. But once it gets over to the far left, that's a long dot-to-dot -dot pass right there. And a terrific play by Jordan Leopold. Face-off win by Saboka. Look at that. Spins around, uses his left skate, punts it back to the defenseman, Bolmeister. Now you're trying to reverse the flow. It ends up going over to Leopold, who half slaps it and puts it right on the tape here. No mistake whatsoever. The quick hands and a great release from Vladi Tarasenko. That shot was an absolute laser. Oh. And the Blues, another power play goal. This one at 332. Tarasenko's 15th of the year. And he has a goal and one assist tonight. Now Jackman Long Aerial in the area of Stewart. Weidman back defensively. Chipped along by Westgard, held in by Jackman. Now Stewart back of the goal, and tried to center one. That was blocked by the stick of Ramo. And Colborn away for Calgary. Long dump in by Westgard. Blues now two for four in the power play. And the latest goal, Tarasenko from Leopold and Sabotka. To break it wide open at 5 0. That's Tarasenko's fifth goal with the man advantage. And you can be sure, John Kelly, there's going to be more with how confident he is playing and the little things that he's doing so well to get the trust of his coaches. Well, the Cardinals' winter warm up returns January 18th through the 20th. Current players and Hall of Famers will be on hand to sign autographs for fans. And Fox Sports Midwest will be there to bring you all the player interviews. Every dollar raised goes to Cardinals Cares, so get your tickets at cardinals.com slash winter warmup. Now Schwartz lobs it back on the goal for Oshie. And then Brody gets it back for Calgary. And off the boards and out Petrangelo. And a bouncer. Romo had to be careful with that one. And now Giordano. Up for Backlund. Held in by Oshie. And now Bacchus in with Schwartz. Giveaway. Here's Petrangelo in the deep slot. Oh. And at the last second, had his pocket picked by Stepniak. And the former Blue moves down the ice. And is cut off by Bollmeister. And then here the Blues the other way. Roy for Petrangelo. Oh. Romo to an open corner. There is Stewart. Jabs one down low for Morrow. Oh. Great reverse hit on Stajan by Morrow. Stajan never expected that at all. Took the left shoulder right in the chest. And he does get the puck to center ice. And now for Hoodler. Line pass picked up by Shattenkirk. And now for Roy. And Derek Roy. Tried to go back with it. That was blocked by Byron. But the Blues again recapture. And then Morrow on his knees trying to make a play. Flames get it. And here they come. Hoodler one-on-one. -on -one in front. And a close save by Halak. As Hoodler made a great move on Jackman. Yeah, Stajan came by and gave it a little swat after Halak had made the save. Shattenkirk jumps right in there on Matt Stajan. But what a nifty move by Yuri Hoodler. Holy jumping. He gave the old outside inside. Thanks for coming. And then goes to the backhand. And Yarrow was right there with the glove. But that is a crafty, all-world move here. He's slick. That's, that is 
<laughs> pretty nifty. Ends up being a fairly routine save, but that's the hit there by Morrow at the other end of the ice on Matt Stajan. And he took it right in the chest by the veteran Brendan Morrow. And then Jacklin was really in sense with Stajan. Yeah, but Shattenkirk we'll was roughing the, minors. But John Shattenkirk was the first guy to get over there, though. He went boom. And those are two unlikely guys. I mean, Matt Stajan and, and, and Kevin Shattenkirk. But Shattenkirk's defending his goalie and goes right over there to Stajan. And they get matching minors at 14.08. Let's see what he did to Yarrow after he made the glove save. Yeah, he, he comes in to try and bump him. And may have made that's, some contact with the goal. Yes, you're right. You're right. I thought he tapped the glove, but he did not. You're exactly, that's exactly right. He goes and leans the shoulder into Shattenkirk, and yeah, no wonder Shattenkirk took exception to that. So four on four, Bowmeister races in. That comes around to Berglund. And he's pinned by Butler. And then back of the goal, Saboka in a battle. But the Flames have it, and here they come to center ice. As Butler waits. Now blast will right into the shin pads of Cole. And that carries back to center ice. Flames are coming off a 6-0 loss Tuesday in Phoenix. And down here, 5-0. Kept in here by Giordano. He moves in. Top angle of shot. Trying to go top corner. That hit the glass and all the way back down the ice. And Tarasenko in a foot race. And he knocks O'Brien off the puck, but now O'Brien recovers and clears it out. And then Payarvi right back in. He goes wide on O'Brien. Trying to hook it back to the front. I'll tell you what, I think Tarasenko surprised O'Brien with his speed there. And now Giordano. He blew a tire at center ice. Jaden Schwartz there, but Brody turning. Good forecheck by Schwartz. And Brody just got away. And now a hard pass to center for Byron. And he is tracked down by Jackman. Flames have it, and a low shot on goal, and a save by Halak. Good chance there. That was on Camilleri. Yeah, quick save there, dragging the right pad, smothering the short side, and then having that pad cover the long side. And then Bacchus takes the shoulder from Byron. That goes deep. Here's Schwartz. Spins away from Brody to Bacchus. In front of Leopold, and his backhander blocked. And the teams are getting set to be back to full strength as Stajan and Shattenkirk return. And that long 100-footer is handled by Halak. Camilleri does that on purpose, and he's going for a line change. So he's got defensemen need to change, everybody needs to change, so he puts it right on net so there's no icing. Under 12 to play here in the third period. The Blues have scored a pair of power play goals in the third to make it 5-0. Now Bowmeister for Reeves. And Reeves under no pressure at all. He'll steer it back of the goal. Schmid sends it around. Now Hoodler. He lost it. Centered over. Stewart was wide open, but it, that pass was just off his stick. Entering play tonight. The Blues, the highest scoring club in the NHL at 3.6 goals a game. And Darren, they've had 15 wins this year by three or more goals. And up by five here with 11.05 to go. Now at center, Pay Arby. And he delays. And then Morrow knocks Weidman down back of the goal. And it's under Weidman. Morrow gets up and he finds the puck. Deals it back to Leopold. A shot. And that was off the skate of O'Brien in front. And tipped away by Colborne. Here's Ian Cole. Now Leopold. Long pass to center for Roy. And he'll just dump it in. And now with this lead, we haven't seen Oshie jump on, which is a good move. Veteran coaching staff, and, you know, they know this isn't the time. Why put him out on the ice? Played the game. They've got a 5 nothing lead. Big game tomorrow night, so he's uh, not seen any ice here in the third. Yeah, he is on the bench. Yep, he is on the bench. Now Tarasenko back for Jackman. Midway through this third period. And then Giordano goes around with it. 
And now Oshie comes on the ice just as we say that. He does that every time to me. <laughs> and Shattenkirk slowly back to center ice. And he'll drop it back of the flame net. Played on to Boma. And then broken up at center ice by Bacchus. And then Schmid will try his shot. That's blocked by Petrangelo. Galliardi now for Schmid. And then Galliardi again, the former Avalanche winger. Teammates of Stewart and Shattenkirk. Wide open stage and waited too long. That was blocked by Oshie. Now Boma for Galliardi. And a drive by Boma, missed by about three inches. Held in by Schmid. Now it's Galliardi again. Turns, tipped, and Halak got a piece of that. And now back is good play down low and ahead for Jaden Schwartz. Schwartz alone in there and a shot. Stopped by Rommel. And then Schwartz is hit into the boards by Weidman and he'll get a penalty, I think, for Bordy. And the Blues have been lethal on the power play in this third period. Speaking of lethal, how about that shot by Tarasenko moments ago? Time for a Bomberito Automotive Sports Update. Ducks tonight in Nashville. This seesaw battle tied late in the second when Temu Solani scores on the power play. Turns out to be the game winner. 109th of Solani's career, tying him for fourth all-time with Brendan Shanahan. One behind Brett Hall for third in history. Guys, back to you. And Pat, how about Temu Solani? Going to play in his sixth Winter Olympics. That's an amazing number. Oh, that's just... Just his conditioning and passion for the game is absolutely unmatched. The Blues have scored two power play goals in a span of 2-16 here in the third period. And are two for four in the night. And a shot by Stepniak goes wide. By the way, Oshie has played 90 seconds in this third period. He's had two shifts. Yeah, but as soon as I said it, he jumps on the ice. we got to talk to Oshie about that. <laughs> He goes, I'll show you, Panger. <laughs> I'm fine. 30 gone in the power play. Now Shattenkirk. Pass down the boards. Here's Stewart, who scored the game's first goal. And Petrangelo can't reach high enough to hold this in. Yeah, and, and again, if the fans are wondering, you know, is he okay? Yeah, he is, he's definitely okay. You don't put a player out there if he's not okay. And the medical staff that you have and everybody else. But, you know, in the third, you no need to put him out. But jump out for a couple of shifts, get in and out, and quick changes. Two shifts. And now it's Leopold down low, flame break it up, oh. and Tarasenko knocked that out of midair, and the flame fire would have been off to the races. And he's got great speed. Yeah, because Jordan Leopold was way down low. He's bottom of the face-off circle down there. Good play by Tarasenko. And here's Tarasenko. Nice pass into Leopold. Tarasenko follows up with 35 to go in the power play. And then the Flames break it up on the near side. And now Byron away for Calgary. Brody drops it, gets it back. Back of the goal. Almost a wraparound opportunity. And now the Blues to center ice with Berglund. Oh, what a play. In for Oshie. Has Saboka instead to Berglund, oh. but he wasn't ready for the pass. I think he, he didn't was, see it coming. Yeah, you're right. I think he was screened. He just went right through the legs. He doesn't see it. And otherwise, what a nifty give and go by two good buddies right there. And it's Shattenkirk again. Weidman is back on. So the Flames kill this one off. The Blues now two for five. And that's center ice Camilleri, but he is offside at the Blues line. 6.41 left in regulation. The Blues with a big lead. Well, the Blues have done an outstanding job working on their specialty teams, and they are amongst the best, but a large part of it comes from the transition on the blue line. You see the two right-hand shots, Shattenkirk and Petrangelo really work that puck around. And there's Petrangelo with that shot, gets a bit of a break as it goes off a stick. And there's a nice pass by Jordan Leopold, dot to dot, right on the tape to Tarasenko. And when you look at quick strikes tonight, First period, two goals in 2.05. And then third period, two power play goals in just over two. Great work by Danny Martinez in that truck doing some quick math down there. And now the Blues have scored at least five goals for the fourth consecutive game. And Darren, they have now scored 160 goals this year. Second only to Chicago's 169. 
but because the Hawks have played three more games after tonight, the Blues have actually averaged more goals per game than Chicago this year. The offense just keeps rolling along, and the Blues will hopefully have Steen back at some point before the Olympic break. It's really impossible to say at this point when he would return. Yeah. Well, the one great thing, the positive thing, if, if, if you're looking at positives here, and I'm usually a glass half full kind of guy, is that he has been through it, and that experience will help him grind through this one. And when he's ready, he will tell the coaching staff and everybody, hey, I'm ready to go. And I'm sure that he's working his tail off and trying to get back here. Now a drive by Jackman High. Bravo never saw that one. And then Oshie, great forecheck. He gets it back in front. Oh! Save on Schwartz by Ramo. On a brilliant pass by Oshie, and Schwartz was absolutely raw by Ramo. He has made some scintillating saves here in this hockey game. And now Stewart cruises in. Oh, little dipsy doodle move there by the Toronto native. Ooh, kind of reverse backhand toe drag right there. <laughs> now Giordano for Hoodler. Oh, and a delayed penalty here against the Blues. The goalie Ramo goes off as the Flames enter the zone. Six attackers here. Now low for Hudler. Now to Giordano. Hudler and Giordano play catch. Tip off the goal post by Brody. And now the Blues touch it. And the Flames will get a power play down by five here in the third. Now Chris Stewart's going to hang out in that old penalty box right there. 5 nothing lead, and after he makes that nice little reverse curl, he goes behind the net. Uh-oh, no, you're only allowed to grab one twig. And he's got two twigs right there. That's an illegal play. Here's the great save. What a pass. What a pass by T.J. Oshie. Right on the tape to Schwartz. A good focus right there by Schwartz. Not as much as that young fella right there. Is that a real baby? <laughs> Cute little fella, isn't he? And, and he's listening to us on Fox Sports Midwest down on the stands. Mm -hmm. There's no question. <laughs> See, that thing. Speaking of no sense at all. Speaking of little guys with gumption. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Flames are 0 for 5 tonight. Brody's wide open. Giordano tips it. Shot off the side of the goal by Hoodler. Now Giordano again. And that barely stayed in the zone. Now for Brody. Here's Giordano. Rare shot. And off the left pad of Hawk. Man, he's been good tonight. He's been sharp. Real sharp. 35 gone on the power play. Camilleri. Hoodler. Again to Giordano. Tipped on goal. Left glove save on Camilleri. And Yarrow made that look like it was rather easy. <laughs> Thanks for coming. <laughs> That's... That's great stuff right there. Sometimes that glove is just in, in the right spot. Keep your eye on the low part of the screen. The pad down low, catch it right on the left pad right there. I mentioned before, Yarrow is one of these guys that he tweaks that goalie equipment. He's always, you know, look, he likes it. He likes it new and out of the box. And he's been working on the new pads, works on the new gloves and blocker all the time. And a drive and a rebound attempt for Hudler and again a save by Halak. And then a flame player, Backlund, was knocked into the goal crease area. Not easy coming off the bench. And, and you know, he lost 8 or 10 pounds. Yarrow was telling me that he thought he was going to come back. Remember when Jake Allen was recalled and then sent back, and then they thought Yarrow was going to be fine? And he was fine, except at 11 o'clock at night, he had 104-degree temperature and was feeling awful. And in the meantime, his partner, Brian Elliott, all he's done is put on a show, a complete exhibition. Goaltending's been great for the Blues all year long. Yeah, all Elliott has done is gone 13-1-2 and two this year. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Absolutely amazing. He has put on a terrific 18 months of hockey. He really has. Except for a stretch in the middle of last year when, when Brian lost his confidence. Man, has he picked it up and has been dynamic. And now you get Halak back tonight. As the Flames get the puck back on the point of the power play. Camilleri. And then for Giordano, 30 to go on the power play. Camilleri again with three minutes left in regulation time. Giordano a shot. Save, rebound, cleaned up by Roy. And he feeds it around the boards, and that will come to center ice. That Giordano's impressive, isn't he? 
he, he's, he's just a good, solid defenseman. Now the Flames down low. Camilleri in front and off the skate of Bomeister and wide. And now Colburn again. In front. A lock comes oh. out the challenge and makes the save on Camilleri. Well, Calgary doesn't like being shut out like they're being shut out here again. And they, from December 23rd, the last game against the Blues, until tonight, they've had three separate shutout streaks of 86 and a half minutes or more. And shut out four times. And this little feathery pass, whoop, goes off the left skate here of Bowmeister as he spins around right there. The one thing about Hoodler and Camilleri that we talked about in our open, John Kelly, they have that puck on a string, don't they? They are danglers of the biscuit. Or are they ever? Flames now 0 for 6 in the power play. 2.25 left. And now it is Morrow to the flame line. Galliardi gets it back. Flames have had 32 shots on goal tonight. To 28 by the Blues. Now Roy lobs it ahead. That's gloved down by O'Brien. Blues are in Vancouver tomorrow night. 9 o'clock start St. Louis time. We're on the air at 8.30 on Fox Sports Midwest. Now the Flames have it in the corner. Step the F. And he's checked there. And Lapierre, the former Canuck. And he'll kill some time. That's gloved down by Ramo. At the line, Jackman for Lapierre. Wide open Cole. He has one tonight. In for Pay Arby. And now picked up by Reeves. Hard pass to Jackman. And a shot. And that's off Schmitz game wide. Now Pay Arby again. Loose fourth line playing keep away here. And Pay Arby didn't get a lot on that one. And now we get a whistle. And a cross check against the Flames. Well, McGratton's stick is actually still in his hands. And it is snapped in half. Calgary 16 cross check. And there, I mean, the proof is right there in the pudding. He, he, he leans right in. Actually, all he, he leans right in so strongly to the backside of Magnus Payarvi, who's coming in with speed. And that little extension right there and the force of Payarvi coming into him snaps the stick right at the hands. Right there of Big Earn, the guy they call Big Earn, Brian McGrath. So another power play for the Blues. It's Petrangelo for Bergman. In the final minute now in the third period. Sabotka for Shattenkirk. And his shot blocked by Schmid. And he's broken his stick. And then played back to Vladi Sabotka. Slap pass intended for Shattenkirk. Now off the skate of Boma, who does not have a stick. And now Sabotka again. Here's Petrangelo, a shot and a pad saved by Ramo. Flames cleared off the boards and down the ice. Yaro Halak about to pick up his third shutout of the year. That will match Brian Elliott's three shutouts this year. Terrific return to the net. That'll give him a great deal of confidence. And now Bomeister. That shot was blocked. 15 to go here. And the Flames in Backland. Out of the zone. Into the zone. Backland shot. Blocked by Bowmeister. Now Lee Stemniak trying to fire one in front. That's blocked by Roy. And time runs down. The Blues win it in shutout style for Yarrow Halak. Stopping off 33 in a 5-0 win. Well, he was terrific. And sometimes the scoreboard is a little misleading. And the Calgary Flames had a number of great scoring opportunities for Vladi Sabotka, Vladi Tarasenko, and the Blues get enough for Yaroslav Halak. Oh, crack open a cold one, John Kelly, because Yaro Halak is our Bud Light player of the game. 33 shots against his 28th career shutout and 19th with the Blues. That is a remarkable number. A record for Blues goaltender. Blues win it 5-0 here in Calgary.